Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Tonight, I'm going to get into some frequently asked questions. I'm going to go through the comment section and see what you guys are uh, asking about. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dwayne. You can call me 12. I cover Splinterlands all day, every day, because it's changed my life, and I think it can change yours. One of the ways I like to explore that and that confidence, explore that knowledge, explore that experience, is by going through the comment section and seeing what you guys are asking about, because... It's never just you that's interested in the comment you leave. It's always, you know, there's a broad audience of people that are interested in the topics that people, you know, one or two people have the, you know, the interest in writing a question, but tons of people want to know the answer. So let's get into that. Uh, I'm going to select a few questions. I have one that I already queued up and I've got an answer to it. It requires the math, so I'm, I'm going to be ready for that. It has to do with earning potential within the game. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you stick around. Um, and the other, we're going to grab probably two mother, two or three other questions here, and it'll be, those will be random. Um, but before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, uh, you can check out my discord. You can join the discord and, and be part of the time and attention discord. And, you know, you can also join the, the guild through becoming an intern. Uh, you can become an intern by being a silver member of my YouTube supporting you know, the community of people supporting my YouTube, silver or higher. And I guess that's it. Let's get into it. So the first question I saw here from Adam O'Brien said, what are the earning, what are the earnings per hour per day? Like at the moment, can diamond players get upwards of $50 per day? And what would, what would be the cost to get that level? So first of all, you know, the easy question is, you know, what would it cost to be a diamond player? How many, um, how much collection power do you need to be a diamond player? And once you have that, like in order to get that, what would be, be the financial exp payout or, or sorry, financial cost to get there? So if we go over here and we look at the leagues, we can see that diamond is going to require 250,000 power or more. Now we go over here into my main account, Infidel1258. We can see that I have roughly 900,000 power. We go over to here to peak monsters and I can see that it's $72,000 worth of value worth of cards. So if I was to take 70, $72,000, which is my account value divided by three, then I'm going to get 300,000 power, which is what you would need to play at a diamond level. You're talking 24,000 us dollars as of today's price price point. Now there is probably, you can do it cheaper. You know, that's, that's just looking very basic numbers at what the cards I have. Some of the cards I have are extremely expensive, like Kitty, like um, many legendary dragon cards that I've had for quite a while. So those are cards that you wouldn't necessarily have to buy in order to reach 300,000 power. You, you, could, you could access 300,000 power for much, much cheaper. You know, I would say probably um, something in the neighborhood of 80, 80 power per dollar. Uh, 80 collection power. So we go, you need 300, 000, you need 250,000 collection power, but call it 300. So you have a little bit of wiggle room, 300,000 divided by 80. You could, you could probably buy these, this sort of power for four grand. So that's a huge difference. I want you to, I want to point that out. What I, I, I have very, very expensive cards, but you could do it for much, much cheaper. Even if you round it up to say 5,000, I think that's very possible that you would get a functional deck, um, you know, five to $6,000 to get you, you know, right at that cusp of, um, of diamond. So the cost five to 6,000 bucks, I would say, and upwards of 24,000, if you're going to buy very premier cards that are super meta, which I never, never, never recommend. Okay. That's the answer to cost. Now, what do you get out of it? So the first thing is when you play the game, you're going to have daily rank battles and those battles are going to produce DEC per win. This is a win I had earlier today. I'm just going to skip it. You're going to see that I got 28 DEC for that win and that's at gold. Um, and so, you know, if you took that and you times it by, I, I called it 25 DEC because I get certain bonuses. I get a 10% gold card bonus. I get a 10% alpha card bonus. Sometimes there's a win streak bonus. Sometimes there's a guild bonus. I don't have a guild bonus. Um, with this account, but I said 25 and I, and I went ahead and I times 25 by 15, 25 possible victories, sorry, uh, 25 DC per victory times 15 possible victories in a day is going to be a buck 50 a day or two 2250 per season. And a season is 15 
a season is 15 um uh a season is 15 days and then when you hold cards that's one factor so you got dc you got 22 bucks for the dc per season put that away and you're going to get sps because you have 300 you now own 300,000 collection power so what's that worth 300,000 collection power is equ equates to roughly and that's not that's not I'm going to break open a new one 300,000 collection power divided by last I checked it was roughly 9,000 uh, collection power gives you one SPS so you're going to get roughly 33 SPS per day and you're going to times that by 15 cents which is the five dollar value and then you're going to times that by 15 days so 75 dollars worth of SPS uh, per season so we're up to about 100 right we had 20 we had 2250 for DC we have 75 dollars for SPS now we have uh, the loot chest value you're going to get 10 loot chests every day roughly speaking you know you sometimes you're actually not going to get them because you're too busy or you don't you can't beat it or whatever but assuming you got them all it's going to be 50, 10 loot chests a day times 15 loot uh, 15 daily rewards plus 40 at the end of the season you're going to get 190 it's probably going to be less than that but let's just let's just work with me here guys and then the, if you go over to splintercards.com uh splintercards.com use tools loot chest you can see the calculator value and you can see that um loot chest value is roughly around 11 cents right now i, I put in 11.7 because that's where it was a moment ago um and so if you if you say if you times that value us dollar value by the number of loot chests where is it yeah 190 loot chest times one point or point one one seven, which is the US dollar value per loot chest, you get twenty-two dollars and twenty-three cents per loot chest that you're likely to accumulate through that full season. So we can add those all up. And when we do, and we divide this is the total. When we add that all up and we divide it by 15 to give you a daily total, you're likely to get because of DC, SPS, and um, loot chests you're likely to get eight bucks a day um, and you can times that by 365 days and you're likely to make 2930 13 dollars playing the game at current outcomes and these outcomes are always fluctuating because there there are tons of variables what's the price of sps today what's what's the price of dec today how is the card market doing um you know, are you stuck in in gold because you just can't get out this season? That's all. There's so many variables. Is the SPS airdrop still going on? So there's so many variables that it's really hard to pin this down over 365 days. But, you know, you asked, this is the best I could give you. It's roughly $8. If you were to play in low diamond or high gold, you're going to get roughly eight bucks a day, I would argue, currently. And if you projected that out, it would be roughly... 3,000, 2,900 bucks roughly. But here's the problem. And I, and I did say to you at the beginning of the video that, that the, the cards you would need to get up to that value would be, you know, at least 4,500, 4, 5,000 bucks. And that's going to be, those are going to be the cheapest cards out there. Uh, that's not really fair. You, you're not going to be able to just sneak by on the absolute cheapest power. But I keep in mind, I said, I, I didn't, my, the, the number I threw you at for the cost to get that deck uh, wasn't entirely unreasonable. Let's 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 ex take a moment to explore that more fully. So when you come over here into buy on the Peak Monsters website, you go over to the buy window and you go to compare and you go to over here and you go on best CP to cost ratio. You now see the cheapest holy cow, the cheapest collection power to cost. This card right here is 400 collection power. Give it to me. 400 collection power per dollar which is ludicrous. I, and I just bought it. I don't know what that was about. That's, that's insane. Look, but 150, 140, 140, these are really high collection power to cost ratio. Um, and you absolutely could go through and just select all these. You're, you're going to be getting an amazing deal at these rates. You could get way cheaper than I, than I quoted you. I quoted you, um, I quoted you at 80, at 80 collection power but if you want like this 300,000 hang on how do I do that you want 300,000 collection power 
divided by 140. Because that's the one, the, no, that's not, yeah, yeah, that's right. That This would be the US dollar value of it, assuming you're buying it at these sort of collection power rates. So I did 80 divided by 80, which gave me 375, 30, 3750 US dollars to get that deck. I really do believe you could probably, and look, if I click on summoners and I, I look at the collection power window, you, you see a drop off. Now summoners are going to cost you, summoners are going to cost you closer to 50 or 40, but you could come out of this and, and spend, you know, probably 1500 bucks on summoners. You'd have a full, you'd have, you'd have awesome summoners to work with. And then 3000 bucks on cards. I think you'd easily have 300,000 power and it'd be a meaningful deck. So again, 5,000 bucks is probably the number that you need to spend to really have a functional deck and the income that you could expect to generate totally rough because again, all the variables is going to be around 2,900 bucks. Here's the final point I want to make. This $2,900 figure is so distorted because of those variables I quoted to you earlier. How much is DEC today? How much is SPS today? How much is the SPS airdrop still going on? And so on and so forth. But there's one key point that everyone needs to hear. If, you've, if you're wondering the value proposition of Splinterlands, it's this. The assets you accumulate when you win this game are not worth what they say they're worth. When you come over here to Splinter Cards and it says it's worth 11, every loot chest is worth 11 cents. This is today's value for an asset that's currently in print, but that is limited in number. And you need to wrap your head around that or you'll never get this game and you can, you will not succeed in at playing it because you will give up uh, disappointed with 11 cent victories, 11 cent earnings. They're not worth 11 cents. That's their price today. And that's the average price based on all of the possible outcomes that could come out of it. Common cards, rare cards, and so on. These cards are really undervalued right now because Chaos Legion is currently out. The packs are being sold. Everyone's focusing on Chaos Legion. And because of that, you are going to see huge declines. And we already have seen huge declines in the prices of cards that are bought off the marketplace. People would rather buy packs because who knows what's inside that pack. Maybe it's a gold foil legendary, which is worth hundreds of dollars. It's a lottery ticket. People love that. It's fun. Um, that that's why that's part of why the card marketplace has been tumbling and why those, those prices won't likely rise in a meaningful sense until the, the packs are sold out, but the packs are going to sell out. And the cards that are being given away in those daily loot chests are limited in number and they're ever shrinking because they're constantly being merged. And the game, the number of players playing the game is always growing. That is the perfect recipe for price appreciation. And that's why you can't really say it's $2,900 worth of income over across a year, or you can't even really say it's $8, you know, today. It's, it's, it's $8 today if you bought it, or sorry, if you earned it and then you sold it and put it into fiat currency, which would be nonsense. What you should do if you understand what this game is and if you enjoy it is you would play the game at whatever level you can manage, whether that's silver, gold, bronze, whatever, champion, diamond, great. Um, play and earn and understand that the earnings you're receiving are deflationary in nature and allow them to sit and appreciate with time. Understand that the time horizon with a game like this is not two or three days or two or three weeks or even two or three months. It's probably two or three years if you're getting started now. And why do I say that? Because it takes time for those cards. For instance, um, for Chaos Legion packs to get out of the way. And then after that, for the, for the cards that, that have, that you've been playing with over the last few months to start to really become defined as meta. And, uh, that, that takes, that does take time. Like I've, I've told you guys before, I, you know, Yodin came out and L Scarred Llama came out and people like me who understood the game quite well, still said to ourselves, you know, this card's pretty good, but I guess I'd, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's worth a lot of money and I'm going to think I'm going to sell it for $20. That, that happened for Yodin. So that happened because there was a lack of understanding of where that card, how deeply entrenched that card could be within the meta. And there's a million other examples of, there's at least dozens of other examples of that. 
um, in the marketplace. When you go look at the, uh, the shop and you see what's for sale, especially if you want to focus on legendaries, you can just see time and time again, the old legendaries, these used to sell for, you know, a dollar a piece, not the gold foils, the regular foils. You know, I bought Angel of Lights for $5 a piece. I bought Corrupted Pegasus for $5 a piece. I brought, I bought, um, and Kron for, I think, I think a dollar. I'm pretty sure Kron was a dollar per BCX. Um, it was very common to pay 40 bucks for a, for a full, like a max level legendary uh, monster. And this is not what happened before, but will never happen again. This is the nature of the game and the nature of these deflationary assets and how they work intrinsically. And so if you can't wrap your mind around that, you won't ever really understand the, uh, the proposition that this game is making to its players. Um, but if you can understand what I've just said to you, then you're going to see that the rewards I described while as accurate as possible are not at all, um, the true value of what you would be receiving by putting your time and attention into this game. I hope that makes sense. And that was the detailed answer I wanted to give today that I came prepared. Obviously I had calculators set up and everything. Um, I do think it would cost you about five grand to get set up in diamond. I do think that you're going to get about three grand worth of, you know, value out of price, you know, assets, um, or across a year of play. Um, but I also understand that, 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 that's going to wiggle as the SPS and DC and so on very, uh, very in sway. Um, but regardless of whether it's 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, in three or four years time, the asset, every single asset you accumulate, every single one will appreciate in this game because this game is good, because this game is here to stay, because these assets are deflationary in nature. Okay? So let's move on to the next question. 